Monday afternoon and happy Labor Day. I'm Catherine Amenta in for Gordon and Peggy. Well, if you have outdoor plans this afternoon, we want to check with Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Jessica Faith. And Jessica, it is cloudy out there, but not much chance of rain, right? Well, farther toward the north, there is a pretty good chance for rain. Actually, there is a severe thunderstorm warning for portions of Mercer and Venango County, and that is until 1215. So within the next 15 minutes, we're going to continue to monitor this storm. This is the storm we've been watching all morning. The storm, the line of storms that was right around Lake Erie has now pushed farther toward the south. You see all of the lightning there within that severe thunderstorm warning. Also, hail is possible, quarter size hail that will be something we will be tracking today. Storm moving east at 45 miles per hour. A lot of heavy rain associated with it, but not all of the region is seeing rain right now. I will map out when you can see showers in the hour by hour forecast that's coming up in just a little bit. Jessica, thank you. A Pittsburgh tradition canceled because of the pandemic this year. Talking about the Labor Day parade, of course. Jen Levin's Mike Holden found, though, another event where people could safely gather and honor America's workers. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced union members to cancel their parade altogether. Instead, they spent their time this morning at church here in Oakland, sending out a message of gratitude. Channel 11 was there as union laborers and loved ones gathered at St. Paul Cathedral in Oakland. Socially distanced and masked up, churchgoers sat in spaced out pews. The annual mass was held with extensive and rigorous COVID-19 precautions in place. This year, Labor Day looked and felt very different. Normally, a parade of more than 100,000 people follows. This year, those plans were put on pause. Organizers said it just wasn't safe, and they wanted to keep parade goers out of harm's way. During mass, they prayed for the workers who are still working and for those unemployed and off the job. Those in attendance say they were on a mission to continue to give back and help others during this uncertain time. So much has changed, and it's so important that we remind everyone um, what it is to, you know, to have humanity back again and, and put hope into people and remember this country is built on service. And organizers are hoping to now have an even bigger parade come 2021. In the meantime, I'm now asking them about the impact of not having the parade and what that will mean for the local economy, plus how they are faring during this very difficult time for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting in Oakland, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. Yeah, Mike, that is a big hit to the economy for sure. Politics now, Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Kamala Harris will both be in Wisconsin today. Pence is expected to tout the Trump economy pre-pandemic and its comeback. Harris will pay a visit to Milwaukee and tour the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. She'll also attend a roundtable with black business owners. More campaign stops in Pennsylvania have been announced, and three of them are in our area. It is quite a list, so stick with me here. We're told President Trump's son, Eric Trump, will be in Washington County on Thursday. And then Vice President Mike Pence will be in Beaver and Westmoreland counties on, thir on Wednesday. We're told he will speak at Cornerstone Ministries and Export and at Penn Energy Resources Natural Gas Well and Freedom. And former Vice President Joe Biden will be in Harrisburg today for Labor Day. He's holding a virtual meeting with union workers and recognizing working families. And then on Friday, the president and Joe Biden will both visit the Flight 93 Memorial in Shanksville. Memorial officials say that ceremony will not be open to the public. That's in keeping with social distancing rules and also the wishes of family members. Friday is the 19th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. We know how important Pennsylvania is in the race for the White House. And as we enter the final weeks now, we just want to highlight some key things to remember over the next several weeks. So first, President Donald Trump narrowly won the state in 2016, beating Hillary Clinton by less than 1%. Prior to that, Pennsylvania has gone Democrat in six straight presidential elections. Former Vice President Joe Biden is a PA native. He's a Scranton native. And recent polls show the race tightening over the last six weeks, with Biden lead dropping from 13 to 4 points. At least 300 people were at a block party over the weekend in the Hill District, and at least 40 gunshots rang out. Incredibly, just one person hurt. We found some neighbors cleaning up the streets early Sunday. They had garbage bags and were picking up cups, bottles, and broken glass. This was on Perry Street and Wiley Avenue. It's not the people in the neighborhood. It's the people that come from outside. You know, there's nothing to do, nothing at all. So they just get together, have a good time. 
And, uh, you know, you get, you get good apples, you get bad apples. As for the shooting, police didn't say they found any victims where the shots were fired, but a man did show up to the hospital early Sunday morning with wounds to his arm. Pittsburgh police say they are aware of block party complaints in the Hill District, and the parties have not gotten permits from the city. Pittsburgh police said in part, quote, police conduct regular patrols not only in the Hill District, but in all of the zones and respond to disruptive gatherings. Police are working on ways to engage with community leaders to discourage these big parties, they tell us. Now, police need your help identifying two men who robbed a Westmoreland County convenience store at gunpoint. I want to show you these pictures this afternoon. Police released these, the state police did, and they show both men with their faces covered, so tough to make out. But troopers hope somebody recognizes them or knows something about this. The men are accused of robbing the 7-Eleven on Fayette Avenue in North Bell Vernon. Breaking at noon, the Allegheny County Health Department just releasing the latest COVID numbers, and it reports 39 new cases in the last 24 hours. No new deaths were reported. Positive cases come from 536 tests taken between Wednesday and yesterday. Meanwhile, the United States reaching another milestone in the fight against COVID-19. According to the latest numbers from NBC News, 190,000 people have now died of COVID. There have been more than 6 million confirmed cases. New York, New Jersey, Texas, California report the highest number of deaths. And researchers from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation say that deaths could hit 3,000 a day in December if current trends continue. Pennsylvania is second to last when it comes to making COVID-19 tests available. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. The university found there were only 13,000 tests available per 100,000 people. Puerto Rico was last. Rhode Island came in first. Crews are spending this holiday weekend battling dozens of wildfires in several states out west. And this is what it looks like from space. California has been hit especially hard and hazardous weather conditions could lead to more fires. CNN's John Lawrence reports. A pyrocumulus cloud hovering over California caused by major wildfires this Labor Day weekend. According to Cal Fire, more than 2 million acres in the state have been scorched thus far this year, a record, and things aren't likely to ease anytime soon. Three of the four largest fires in California history are burning right now. And the heat in triple digits off the charts for even September, and we're not even close to the peak of the wildfire season. The El Dorado fire in the San Bernardino area and the fast-moving Valley Fire in Hapatul has some residents getting ready to evacuate. It just exploded and came up to almost where it's at now. And it just, the intensity of the heat is just crazy. There's a lot of houses. been sitting there for a while, and now it's starting to move. The Creek Fire is spreading rapidly through the Sierra National Forest, where the California National Guard rescued more than 220 people who were trapped in the Mammoth Pool Reservoir Recreation Area. To see all of the interagency partners come together uh, with the amount of resources, with the uncertainty of what was actually going to come off the helicopter, there were plenty of resources uh, to ensure that all were provided the care that they needed. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And the Creek Fire ignited Friday night and by Sunday morning had burned about 45,000 acres. Authorities are investigating what caused it and the governor has declared a state of emergency for five counties. More than 100 residents of a Westmoreland County nursing home are back in their rooms this afternoon. They had a fire and a power outage last night. A tree fell on their generator at Murraysville Rehab and Wellness Center, and that sparked a fire, knocking out the power. 103 residents had to be taken to a nearby church just for their safety, and everyone was allowed to return to the facility late last night. Now, if the center's name sounds familiar, just last week, 11 Investigates spoke with whistleblowers there who exposed what they call inhumane conditions. The day after our report, employees told Channel 11 the parent company promised to hire more nursing assistants and get them the supplies they need. You can find the complete 11 Investigation up right now on your news app. Several officers stood on Mayor Bill Peduto's front porch this weekend when protesters returned to his house in Point Breeze. Let me show you this video from our Trib partners. A tense scene here. The group was at his house for about an hour before marching to East Liberty. 
protesters have gone to the mayor's home several times since the arrest of a protester in Oakland last, uh, last month. You may remember plainclothes officers in an unmarked vehicle, and police say that those officers were wearing badges and identified themselves during the arrest. Protests were in the streets for the fifth night in a row in Rochester, New York. The group is calling for police reform after body camera footage showed officers putting a hood over the head of a man they arrested, Daniel Prude. Prude lost consciousness during the incident and later passed away. Last night's protest came on the heels of the Rochester police chief and mayor vowing to change the policing in the city. Protests in Portland, Oregon have been going on for more than 100 nights, 101 to be exact. They began in late May after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis and have swelled. Over the weekend, police arrested more than 50 people. The arrest came after some people in the crowd threw firebombs at officers, one which set a community member on fire, police said. One of the organizers of the nonviolent protest said that the social justice message has been diffused by people with other agendas. Black lives are in the middle of all these agendas. Uh, the rocks are being thrown. Obviously, they got to cross the middle before they can get to the other side. The protest turned deadly last weekend when a supporter of a right-wing group was shot and killed in a clash with left-wing protesters. On Thursday night, police shot and killed the man suspected in that murder as they tried to arrest him. Labor Day gas prices are the cheapest they've been in years, and experts say it will stay that way for a while. This morning, the average price for a gallon of regular in Pittsburgh is $2.42. Industry analysts say you should expect cheap gas through the end of the year, and they attribute it to reduced demand from high unemployment and millions working from home. West Virginia University cracking down after a weekend of parties. This is breaking at noon, the big change coming to campus immediately and how a high school football team is using technology to save their season. We're seeing strong to even severe thunderstorms in our northern counties. Coming up, I'm looking at the latest storm tracker. We'll go hour by hour and let you know the best shot for showers and storms for the rest of your Labor Day. WPXI Now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI Now. Always on when you want the latest on breaking news. You have questions. Will my business bounce back? Should I advertise? Can I afford not to? Look to us for your answers. We're Studio 11 Pittsburgh. Award-winning video production that works. When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. 
Welcome back on this Monday afternoon. More school districts start their school year tomorrow, and that includes Pittsburgh Public Schools, which had delayed their classes while they waited for laptops, which still have not totally arrived yet. Now, in addition to Pittsburgh, students in North Allegheny, Gateway, Shaler, Hopewell, and dozens of others all head back tomorrow. Make it a fantastic first day. And if you want to double check your district's rules before tomorrow morning, we have extra coverage on your WPXI News app and WPXI.com. It won't be long before these stands will have fans once again in high school sports like football return. And while fans can attend games, some parents want more control over the decision. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman explains one proposal. I can't imagine his senior year not being able to attend and watch him and participate in a sport that he's played since he was five. Melissa King is one of many parents wanting to watch her son play football this season. There's now a chance she can with House Bill 2787. It passed in the House on Wednesday. The bill leaves the decision up to each school district regarding fans, not the county or the state. School districts would be able to decide how many fans may attend indoor and outdoor games under enforced CDC guidelines. We spoke with local state Representative Josh Kale, who co-sponsored the bill. I think our local officials are most qualified to make those decisions. They're on the ground. They understand what's happening. As of right now, fans are technically allowed at games under the governor's new guidance. But many football coaches tell me it would be impossible to have fans with the 250-person limit. I think that 250 limit doesn't help anybody at all, really. The athletic director for Mars shared his attendance breakdown with us for football. Between players and coaches, the total is 120. Cheerleaders and band members are more than 90. Then when you tally up referees, trainers, administration, and so on, that quickly adds up to 250. And I think we all know our own students. We all know our own school district. And, you know, I think we have done a great job managing this from the very beginning. So why not give us an opportunity and a chance to prove that this thing can work? In Allegheny County, the Health Department and Whippy are also only allowing 250 people at outdoor sporting events, but in individual pods of 50 people. Parents hope the bill will change that before game time. I'm really excited about um, the opportunity for that bill to be passed, and I'm hopeful that our administration will provide consideration to increase the limit. Senator Wayne Langerholtz told Channel 11 exclusively that the House bill will officially move on to the Senate next week. As chairman of the Senate Education Committee, we held a committee meeting to discuss House Bill 2787. It passed the committee by a vote of 10 to 1. It is now on to the full Senate for consideration. Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. And he told Channel 11 that he is confident this bill will pass in the Senate this week. Their goal is to get the bill on the governor's desk before Friday night football. He tries to keep everything fast paced because we don't have enough time. We don't have much time with him. How about this one? A football team in Alaska is all in on the social distancing. They're coaching virtually, at least part of it. Because of COVID, the Homer High School football team added remote coaches. One coach is in Anchorage and the other thousands of miles away in California. And they watch the games and practices on Zoom like you see right here. There's a speaker hooked up to the iPad and so they're all communicating in real time. The more help that I have, uh, the more individualized instruction we can get on the field. Um, and also the more quality coaches I get, the better it makes me look. Hey, whatever works, right? They've had a few issues with the Here connection. That's to be expected. But for the most part, players feel there like the coaches Rotate. are actually yep. there. Well, breaking at noon, this is big. West Virginia University announcing all undergrad classes at the Morgantown campus will now be online through September 25th. The change is in response to a recent increase in COVID cases among students. The school is concerned that weekend parties could lead to more cases. The move comes after 29 WVU students got suspended for violating their COVID policies. That decision was made after social media posts showed big parties on Friday and Saturday. Saturday nights. And listen to this part. The university says a member of the Theta Chi fraternity who tested positive for COVID and was told to quarantine went to one of those parties. The suspended students are banned from campus and cannot take online classes either. Your severe weather team 11 forecast. We're looking at live storm 
tracker Doppler 11 radar and we have been tracking some pretty strong thunderstorms that have now started to move toward the south of I-80. So here's I-80 here and even with this cluster of thunderstorms that we're seeing associated with a lot of lightning that was under a severe thunderstorm warning that has been allowed to expire about three minutes ago. But you see the bright red there indicating some very heavy downpours just to the north of Butler there right around Newcastle now moving toward the south of Franklin. We're going to continue to watch this slide toward the south, but mainly the uh, motion has been off toward the east, but we do expect it to continue to move toward the south. And I know a lot of folks have plans to go outside and grill. Know that wet weather is possible for today. We have been saying isolated rain chances, but now starting to look a little better as far as coverage is concerned. Let's look at Storm Tracker and track out the rest of your afternoon. So still around one o'clock. So within the next hour, still looking at the bulk of the activity being toward the north, which means uh, near Pittsburgh, Washington, Greensburg, you're still looking to be dry within the next hour. Go ahead and get your uh, outdoor plans in within the next few hours around three o'clock can still see the bulk of the activity well off to the north. Some of that moisture could slide throughout the rest of the afternoon, even into the evening hours. So let's say around 7, 8, 9 o'clock, Pittsburgh, Beaver, even Washington could be seeing some showers at this point after sunset, looking like a lot of the storm possibilities uh, will be much lowered. So mainly just seeing some rain. And I think we will keep that cloud cover going for the rest of the day. So where it looked like we were seeing the possibility for some partly cloud cloudy skies along with the mostly dry conditions. Our chances for wet weather has increased and even our cloud cover possibility has increased as well. So not looking at the prettiest day to be outside, but I still say don't cancel your plans. Just be weather aware. One way to do that is to download our weather app and have your locations turned on so you can track any showers that may push into your area. Even as we go into the nighttime hours, here is your five day forecast, 85 degrees for today. We are tracking the shot up possibility for more thunderstorms and we could even see more severe thunderstorms as we go into the afternoon hours. And I will say to pay attention to those severe thunderstorm warnings when and if they are issued. You can see very strong winds gusting up to around 60 miles per hour. Also lightning is very dangerous. If you see any lightning in your area or if you hear the rumbling of thunder, go inside, bring your plans inside. For tomorrow, warming up into the upper 80s, kind of pushing near that 90 degree mark. But we're looking to be rain free. Similar story for your uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, scattered showers and thunderstorms, temperatures in the low to mid 80s. It's, it would be kind of pointless to pay the same amount of tuition for your, what's essentially like an online education. And he's not the only one that feels that way. How the pandemic is reshaping people's attitudes towards education. Plus, how you can make your voice heard about the future of a much-loved park. Stay with us. From the beginning. The first two cases of the coronavirus. The coronavirus is taking its toll on our region. Channel 11 has kept you informed, giving you the facts. I am declaring a state of emergency. Schools in Pennsylvania will be closing. Unemployment continues to rise. With a team you can trust, digging for new details. Brighton Rehab, bringing in the National Guard. How exactly this Reopening started. Reopening Pennsylvania will be done regionally. As our city reopens, Channel 11 News will cover everything happening in our area because we are coverage you can count on.
Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. A project to make improvements at a park in Butler County is getting closer to the finish line. According to Butler Radio, a pre-built restroom was put in place last week at Preston Park in Butler Township. Crews are also clearing a parking area and digging out a storm pond. Construction should be wrapped up by the end of the month and then crews will start paving. Ligonier Township now wants your input on the future of Ligonier Beach. The township bought the property last year, and some of the options include renovating the pool or turning the site into a more traditional park. Development plans were delayed due to the pandemic. There is a public hearing next week. A heads up here, if you see low-flying helicopters around Butler County, don't worry about it. It's all routine. Officials say they're checking the power lines and the gas pipes. Butler County Regional Airport says you will notice them over the next few weeks. A lot of business opportunities are found through networking, but the pandemic, of course, putting a stop to most of that. Until now, the new tool you can use to keep in touch and get ahead. It was a great day for Pittsburgh, and it was a great day for the good guys. We'll tell you how federal authorities say they are dismantling a major international drug operation that involves people right here at home. We're tracking out some very strong thunderstorms, mainly in the northern portion of our region. Also some very heavy rain. Up next, I'll let you know what you can expect for the rest of your Labor Day. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. Employees blowing the whistle tonight on what they say is inhumane care. They're being neglected. You've seen family members who are really afraid to speak out. And now we're seeing action. We will be watching, though, to see if things improve. Count on Channel 11 News. Pittsburgh's Chief Meteorologist Stephen Cropper tracking the weather in your neighborhood. Welcome back on this Monday afternoon. A two-year undercover drug investigation has led to 27 federal indictments. Officials say the charges will help to dismantle a major international network that stretched from Mexico to Pittsburgh. Channel 11's Rick Earl shows us how Pittsburgh ended up in the center of this massive drug sting.
a cocaine brick that was stamped Gucci, uh, that was an intercepted parcel sent between Los Angeles and Pittsburgh. Federal agents launched Operation Tripwire after a postal inspector noticed a large number of packages coming to a Pittsburgh address from California. He developed sufficient evidence, obtained a federal search warrant, opened the parcel, and found that the parcel contained four kilos of cocaine. Agents eventually traced the drugs to a Mexican cartel. And so we were intercepting calls to and from the people in the United States directly uh, to Mexico and, and to the Sinaloan cartel. Investigators say that cartel smuggled the cocaine into the U.S. to Arizona and California first and then Pittsburgh. They fly things in, they use tunnels underground, they use things, you know, trucks and transport coming across the, the border crossing locations. I'm in Laredo, Texas on the U.S.-Mexican border. Three right years ago, Target 11 traveled to the Mexican border to investigate the drug pipeline to Pittsburgh. Agents showed us firsthand how they search for drugs at border checkpoints. We have a seizure of over $600,000 in cash that was seized during a traffic stop in California. During Operation Tripwire, agents seized over 90 kilos of cocaine and $1.3 million in cash. Mr. Murat, on my right, uh, was a major cocaine supplier for Western Pennsylvania. On Wednesday, federal agents raided homes in three states and arrested 27 members of the cartel's distribution network, 11 in California, 6 in Arizona, and 10 here in Pittsburgh. We took down an entire network that spanned the country and was bringing this poison into our communities. And so it was a great day for Pittsburgh, and it was a great day for the good guys. Rick Earl, Channel 11 News. Like something out of a movie, and the U.S. attorney says they are still working to identify cartel members in Mexico, but the ultimate goal is to track them down and bring them to Pittsburgh to face charges. Right now at 1230, we are starting to see some thunderstorms push in. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Jessica Faith joins us. Jessica, what's the latest? What's the latest? Well, we're looking at a flood advisory in effect for portions of Mercer and Lawrence counties. That's going to be in effect until 3 p.m. Here's what the radar looks like in that area. Now, in Mercer County, a lot of that heavy rain has pushed south of Mercer County, but still look a lot of uh, rain still in Mercer County. That's going to continue to slowly work its way toward the south. So still pouring in an area that has already received a lot of rain. And then in northern Lawrence County, some very powerful thunderstorms there and also some heavy rain get a bit of lightning so the thunderstorms you see right around i-80 it's going to continue to slowly work its way toward the south i have the latest storm tracker and that's coming up in a few minutes you then someone stole a food truck the pittsburgh halal truck posted a picture on facebook asking for help finding it they say it was stolen from a parking lot in west mifflin about two hours later they posted again that they found it about 10 minutes away from where it was parked the keys were missing they thank their social media followers for getting the word out and supporting their small business a new Kensington home destroyed by a weekend fire needs to be torn down now. Fire chief calls the home along Constitution Boulevard very unstable. Take a look at the roof here. The chimney is leaning and the third floor caved in. Look at when it was on fire. This is viewer video from Saturday morning. An incredible fire. And it's actually the third time fire crews were called out to this home. No word on what started the latest fire or when it will be torn down. Every class that I was planning on taking started moving from in person to online. College students are back in class, mostly online though, depending on where you are. And we're learning a lot of people are looking at different options. Channel 11's Gordon Lesh shows us how enrollment in local technical and community colleges is on the rise and why students say it's a no-brainer. 30 to 40 milliamps. While these Rosedale okay, technical good. college Mark students learn the mechanics of cars and trucks, they're doing it differently than just a few months ago. It's been exciting to get back into normal-ish. have these same rotors. The masks and social distancing aren't the only difference. More students are signing up. On August 3rd, just a few weeks ago, was uh, about uh, almost 20% higher than last year. So uh, we're starting to see some pretty significant interest. We've noticed that uh, the jobs that we train for are needed more than ever before. Wilkie says the trades have seen a slight increase over the recent years, but more so when the economy is rocky. 
more people are looking for retraining. So if I want to add six... Candace Carlton enrolled just a month ago. Six million and 12,000. As a massage therapist, she couldn't practice, so she made a career change. Realized that that was a little bit difficult during a pandemic when you can't actually physically interact with anyone. Now she's on the path to be a diesel mechanic. It was a leap of faith, and I'm glad I took that leap because I'm having a great time so far. And as college students get back into class, many of them virtually, some are looking closer to home. I will be here to help you today. I just realized that it's it would be kind of pointless to pay the same amount of tuition for your, what's essentially like an online education, really. This fall, Jared Ridenauer decided to take the rest of his general education classes as a visiting student at CCAC. He's still enrolled at Penn State, but the credits taken at CCAC transfer there. We've seen major signs of uh, an uptick here uh, at late decision makers. For example, our financial aid applications have been up in double digits over the last three weeks. CCAC says this fall they picked up 2% more high school students than last year. And visiting students from other colleges are also up by more than a percent. Many students say they can't beat the savings benefit. My family was probably paying close to eighteen thousand dollars a semester with tuition you know activity fees all that kind of stuff but this semester at ccac it's under four thousand so it's definitely like pretty significant gordon lash channel 11 news if you're working from home, do you feel like you're missing out on chances to network? Well, it's a big deal because 85% of jobs are filled by some form of networking. Zoom is the new meeting room. Fishbowl is the new office hallway. Know that? Fishbowl is a new social networking app that connects professionals. You can interact directly with people and companies through groups that are called, called balls. Did, I said, would someone be willing to pass along my creative portfolio to the recruiter there? And some really kind stranger volunteered, and later that week, I got an interview, and then later on, the job. Also known as bowls, experts say remote networking is a skill all professionals should have moving forward. Well, a federal judge has recommended dismissing criminal charges against three men charged in that deadly duck boat accident in Missouri. 17 people were killed when that boat capsized during a storm in 2018. Remember this? It was one of the deadliest boating accidents in U.S. history. Among the victims, nine members of a single family. The case is not over, though. The judge says the case should be handled at the state level, not the federal. So now a district judge will review that recommendation. More than half a million vehicles recall the danger they pose to drivers and passengers. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and we've been bringing you a special version of Local Steals and Deals, where we shine a spotlight on amazing companies and their passionate founders. Small businesses really are the backbone of America, and we need them to thrive now more than ever. With Local Steals and Deals, we bring you exclusive offers from these brands on products that make your life safer, brighter, and more fun at a time when we all really need it. Join us in making a difference. Simply pick up your phone and text USA to 65000 to learn more. Employees blowing the whistle tonight on what they say is inhumane care. 11 investigates working to get answers for residents and their relatives. People falling out of bed. They're not being showered. They're being neglected. You've seen family members who are really afraid to speak out, aren't they? That is true. I feel guilty for putting them here. And now we're seeing action just one day after our report. The company is now promising to hire more nursing assistants. We will be watching, though, to see if things improve. Count on Channel 11 News.
severe weather coverage where you live on Channel 11 News. Welcome back on this Monday afternoon. The majority of drug overdose deaths in this country are caused by opioids. That's according to the latest data from the CDC. It shows opioids were involved in more than 80% of deadly overdoses last year. Three quarters of those deaths involve fentanyl. And researchers say more than half of these deaths could have been prevented. That means there was at least one opportunity somewhere to get that person help before or during an overdose. A federal judge is stepping in to make sure the census continues as planned. The temporary restraining order from a California judge applies nationwide, and it's in response to the Trump administration's efforts to wind down the population count early. Attorneys for the government say that it was only happening in areas where the census was largely complete, but several lawsuits argue that wrapping up the count early creates the risk of undercounting minorities. Thousands of Americans still waiting for their stimulus payments through no fault of their own. What is being done now to get them the money that some have already received? If you have outdoor plans for your Labor Day, I have an update in the forecast talking storm coverage for the rest of your day. That's coming up next. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows, Steelers, Penguins, Pirates, and more. The hottest Pittsburgh sports topics with even hotter opinions. Halftime adjustments, Wednesday nights at 7.30 on WPXI now. This year, back to school is certainly different. But Channel 11 Morning News is always here to prepare you for your day. Bringing you what's new, what's happening now, and what's next. Be prepared for back to school. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. Be prepared for back to school. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. The IRS will be sending thousands of checks this month to people who wrongfully lost part of their stimulus payments. About 50,000 people were affected by this. Channel 11 Samantha Manning explains what happened. For millions of Americans, the economic stimulus checks were a temporary lifeline as unemployment rates skyrocketed across the country. When it hit, I lost my job. So it took me like a month to get it, another job. But the federal government says not everyone received all of the stimulus money they should have gotten under the CARES Act. Wondering when you're going to get your economic impact payment? For around 50,000 people, the IRS says they no longer have to wonder. For them, part of that economic stimulus money was never delivered because of an error. But the government says it is coming. The IRS announced that those people mistakenly had some of their stimulus money diverted to pay their spouses past due child support. 
According to the latest notice, for people who filled out the proper IRS form, known as the Injured Spouse Allocation Form, you don't need to do anything further. Your catch-up payment checks will be sent in mid-September. For people who didn't fill out the IRS form, you'll still get a catch-up check, but the timeline is unclear on when it will be sent. You can check the status of your payment by using the Get My Payment tool on the IRS website. Samantha Manning, Channel 11 News. Congress is still in a stalemate over negotiations for a second round of COVID relief aid. The pandemic has taken a toll on tourism in Pittsburgh, and that has forced Visit Pittsburgh to make permanent layoffs. According to our news partners at the Pittsburgh Business Times, the 29 workers furloughed in March have now been given notice that they will not be returning. The hotel industry took a major hit when so many events were canceled, like today's Labor Day parade. Officials say 85% of Visit Pittsburgh's revenue comes from the county hotel tax. Korean automakers Hyundai and Kia are recalling more than 591,000 vehicles in the U.S. to fix a brake fluid leak that could cause engine fires. Hyundai is aware of at least 15 fires. Kia knows of eight. No injuries have been reported. The recall will start next month. And this Labor Day weekend marked the busiest period for the TSA since the pandemic started in March. They screened 968,000 travelers on Friday. That's the most since March 17th. Still a long way to go, though. Last Labor Day, that number was 2.2 million. We have a heads up for drivers in the Overbrook neighborhood. You may need to move your car. Milling and paving resumes tomorrow. So crews will be on Pine Castle Avenue, Georgette Way and Richfield Street. You'll get a phone call if you registered for phone alerts from PWSA. Paving crews will also be putting flyers on windshields, giving 48 hours notice. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. The radar has been very active for our northern cities. This is a two-hour loop here showing that the bulk of the uh, thunderstorm activity was to the north of I-80 and slowly moved toward the south. Still looking at a lot of heavy rain, some very strong thunderstorms, frequent lightning, and the bulk of that activity right now, the northern half of Butler County and also throughout Lawrence County, really pounding on Newcastle. There are also a few spotty thunderstorms in the far northern Beaver County. So we're going to continue to track the showers and storms as we go throughout the rest of your Labor Day. Updated storm tracker accounting for the storms that have already been farther toward the north into Butler and Beaver County, not too far from Pittsburgh. So heads up as we go into the afternoon hours, more of that moisture starting to push toward the south and again, kind of slowly making its way toward the south within the next few hours. So around three o'clock, Pittsburgh could be seeing some showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms at this time. More of Beaver County seeing thunderstorms also pushing farther into Armstrong, even Indiana County. So that's what we're going to be watching today. Also watching some of the stronger thunderstorms. We could again see a few more severe thunderstorms as we go throughout the rest of your afternoon into the evening hours and the threats along with those severe thunderstorms. Of course, the heavy downpour is still holding on to that uh, flood advisory in effect for portions of Mercer and Lawrence counties. We could possibly see flood warnings in effect throughout the rest of the afternoon. Along with the heavy downpours, we could also have have uh, frequent lightning that could cause some issues. If you hear thunder, remember when thunder roars, go indoors. Uh, go ahead and bring your indoor plans inside. As a matter of fact, for the entire region of western Pennsylvania, I would have a plan to bring your plans inside in the uh, event for some wet weather in your area, especially for the stronger storms that we could still be seeing later this evening with the heavier downpours. Also, hail is a possibility and uh, gusty winds that could also bring many different effects. Could still see some pretty strong storms around 9 o'clock. The far southern portion is looking to be uh, rain free. I would say Greene County, Fayette County into uh, towards Morgantown could have the possibility of being completely rain free today. This will be something we will continue to monitor and I suggest that you monitor it with us. Download our severe weather team 11 weather app so you can track those showers. There is an interactive radar. Have your location turned on so you can be alerted when some uh, severe weather is in your area. We're going to have a southerly flow pushing warm and moist air into the area. So for tomorrow, pushing near 90 degrees, looking to be dry for Tuesday and Wednesday. Still on the warmer side, but not as hot for Thursday and Friday with scattered showers and thunderstorms.
Right. And did you get a chance to enjoy the nice weather over the weekend? Well, the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy says they've seen 135% more people, and they're not alone. A new report published by Google found use at local parks during the weekend was up 100% between July and August. And in the coming weeks, they will launch a new volunteer program to help care for local parks. She's an 11 year old girl and she's finding a way to positively influence people. Great story here. A young girl with a disability is taking action. How her love for arts and crafts is helping others like her. And now here's local steals and deals, Lisa Robertson. Hey, Lisa Robertson here. And I want to talk to you about something that I found to be really, really shocking. I was reading a statistic recently that one in five women are assaulted. And I was incredulous. I couldn't believe it. And it really scared me for a second. And I thought about my niece. She's going off to college. Oh, she's my heart. I've been my 15-year-old niece. She, you know, is, is, I just, I can't imagine something happening to someone that I love. And I love this idea because it's something that I can give to them and something I can carry to really give me peace of mind and give all of us more safety. It's the Birdie Personal Safety Alarm. And this is something you can keep on your keychain. So it comes in five colors, although I know the colors aren't the point. It comes on a great little brass keychain. You put it on your keychain, you carry it with you. And now if your daughter or your niece is going off to college, she's carrying it with her from class to class. If you like to go running, if you like to go hiking, if you're going to your car in the parking lot in the evening, you have this with you. This is a 130 decibel alarm and a flashing strobe light. Now I'm going to pull this and it's going to be loud, but I'm going to cover it up so it's at least bearable because this is really, really loud. Okay. It's kind of startling. All right. Hold on. No one is going to miss that. This is peace of mind for you and the people that you love. This is one of those things that goes with you everywhere. You can keep one in your car, you can keep one on your keychain, but think about giving one to your mom. Think about giving one to your niece. Think about giving one to your daughter. Think about giving one to your son. He's off on a college campus. He works somewhere where he's going, you know, back and forth a long way to the car. He likes to run. This is a personal safety alarm that everyone can use. I love that it comes in five colors, although, again, I know that's not the point. I do love the fact that you can get it for 20% off right now on localsteals.com. It's a crazy, crazy time. We could all use a little more peace of mind, a little more feeling of safety and security. This year, back to school is certainly different. So much has changed, and Channel 11 Morning News is here to prepare you for your day. Bringing you what's new, new details as your children go back to class or learn from home. Breaking updates all morning long. 11 investigator Angie Moreski reports on concerns. Our medical expert answers your questions. Plus weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Channel 11 Morning News covers what's new, now, and next. Every morning as we go back to school.
When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. So cover up your nose yet you can see your mouth through it, so then you can lip read. And that will really help kids who are hearing impaired, like this little girl. She is raising money to donate clear masks to her local hospital. Her name is Lainey Broad, and she made oh, and sold over 200 bracelets. She donated $2,000 to Children's Minnesota Hospital, and that is enough to buy 270 of these clear masks. And that is so important for the hearing impaired. So much of our communication is nonverbal, where we rely on facial expressions, and for individuals who have hard of or who are hard of hearing, we rely on lip reading as well. Everyone that bought a bracelet from Laney also gets a handwritten thank you note. She is a real class act. Well done. One business that is open today, Rivers Casino, and now they're staying open longer. Rivers will be open 24 hours a day, except on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. On those days, they'll be closed from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. The expanded hours are now in effect. Kennywood, Sandcastle, and Idlewild will have just a few hours left now in 2020. Today is the last day for all three, the pandemic forcing them to cancel their Halloween and holiday seasons this year. Better luck in 2020. That is all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast is tonight at 5. You can always get breaking news updates anytime on our streaming apps. Just search WPXI on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 4.30. Music is giving comfort to babies in the NICU. It's the perfect companion during the pandemic when family is limited. Local parents started the program after losing their child. It makes us feel good to help other babies. Spreading joy to the most vulnerable makes us proud to be from Pittsburgh. Proud to be from Pittsburgh. Brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Great cars, great people. For a great deal on a Honda, visit shophonda.com.